All right, today's lesson is lesson number 66. This is solving exponential and logarithmic equations. We've practiced solving some exponential equations before, but we did it by finding a common base. So we solved, for example, 2, x, two to the x equals 4. We said, oh, that's just 2 to the x equals 2 squared. And then we were able to set the exponents equal to each other and say, okay, then x must equal 2. What would happen though if I had, let's say, 2 to the x equals 7? All right, that's not an even. I can't make 7 have the same base. So we have to have another method, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Then logarithmic equations might look something like this. So like log of x plus 1 equals 4, how would we solve that? So we're going to talk about how to do both of these things in today's lesson. Here are the steps. So if you are watching the video, go ahead and pause here to write down the steps. Both of them require isolating. So if you have an exponential um, equation, if you have a, the variables in the exponent, these are the steps you would follow there. And if you have a logarithmic equation, you would follow these steps. All right, so here are our first two examples. For the first one, we have 6 to the b equals 35. So the exponential term is already isolated. So I'll move on to the next step, which is to take a common log of both sides. All that looks like is this. So I just put the each side in parentheses and take the log of both sides. So I get log of 6 to the b equals log of 35. At this point, I can apply the logarithmic properties that we talked about in the last lesson. So I see that I have an exponent inside my log, and that means that I can apply the power property to pull it down in front. So this will give me b times log of 6 equals log 35. Okay, so now I have a variable times log of 6 equals log of 35. Log of 6, remember, that's just a number. I could plug that in on my calculator and get some decimal answer. So when we have a number being multiplied by a variable, if we want to solve for that variable, we divide by the number. So I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by log of 6. And the logs cancel out on the left-hand side. Okay, cancel out. And I'm left with b equals log of 35 over log of 6. At this point, I would type this in on my calculator. So on the iPad calculators, you type 35, hit the log button, then divided by 6, hit the log button, and enter. Okay, and doing that would give you b equals 1.9843. Okay, I can always check my answer, right? I want to make sure, okay, what if I plug this in for b? Should I, would I get back the right answer? So 6 to the 1.9843 should give me 35, and if I check, it does. It's important to notice that we started with 6 to the b here, so it should be close to 2, right? Our answer makes sense. If we had 6 squared, that would give us 36. So we know that our answer should be really close to 2, but not quite there. Okay, moving on to the next example. Okay, sorry about that. Um, this example, I need to isolate the exponential term. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 3 to both sides. That'll give me 17 to the 2x equals 40. Now that I have the exponential term isolated, I'll take the common log of both sides. That gives me log of 17 to the 2x is equal to log of 40. And again, I can use the power property to pull the 2x down in front. So I have 2x times log of 17 equals log of 40. And now I want to isolate x, so I'll divide by log of 17. Cancels on the left-hand side. I'm left with 2x equals log of 40 over log of 17. The right-hand side I can plug into my calculator just like I did for the first one. So I have 2x equals 1.302. Then to solve for x, all I need to do is divide by 2, and that gives me x equals 0 0.651. Okay, 
moving on to the next examples. Okay, number three is very similar to number one. So we'll start by just taking the log of both sides. The exponent is already, or the exponential term is already isolated, so I can do that right away. And then I'll pull the exponent in front using the power property. So I end up with this. And to solve for n, I need to divide by log of 14. I do that on my calculator, and I end up with n equals 1.4972. Okay, for problem number five, I need to isolate the exponential term first. I notice there's a negative eight being multiplied to it. That dot in between negative eight and 10 to the four x means that it's being multiplied. So in order to, to undo the multiplication, we need to divide. So I'll divide both sides by negative eight. And that gives me 10 to the four x equals 19 over eight because the negatives cancel each other out. Okay, now the exponential term is isolated, so I can take the log of both sides, which gives me this, and I can apply the power property to pull the 4x in front. So I end up with 4x times log of 10 equals log of 19 eighths. Log of 10, if you type in in your calculator, is just 1. And this should make sense because this really is just log base 10 of 10. So it's asking what power does 10 have to be raised to in order to get 10. And we know that would just be the first power. So I can just say this is 1. So I really have 4x equals log of 19 eighths. And I can go ahead and just divide by 4 to solve for x. Plugging in the right-hand side on my calculator, I would get x equals 0 0.0939 as my final answer. Okay, moving on, 5 and 6 are going to be logarithmic equations, so I need to follow those second set of steps. First one being that I need to use logarithmic properties to isolate the log. Here I have two logs, so I need to somehow combine them. I'll start by subtracting the right hand, the log that's on the right, I'll subtract that over so that they're both on the left. That gives me log of negative 5n minus 8 minus log of n plus 4 equals 0. So that whole log is just like one term. It's stuck together, okay? So kind of think like there's parentheses here. So when I move it to the over, other side, I just subtract this whole thing, okay? All right, so now I have subtraction going on between two logarithms with the same base. So back to yesterday's lesson, that means that I can apply the quotient property to combine them, right, to condense or contract the logs. So that will give me log of negative 5n minus 8 divided by n plus 4, and that will equal just the right-hand side of this equation, which is 0. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the second step, which is to convert the logarithm to an exponential equation to solve for the variable. So converting this, I know my base is 10, my exponent is 0, and the other number is what's inside the parentheses, so I set this equal to negative 5n minus 8 over n plus 4. Okay, I know that 10 to the 0 power is just 1, so I'll rewrite it with that. And I want to solve for n, so I need to multiply this whole equation by the denominator. So that will give me n plus 4 is equal to negative 5n minus 8. Again, all I did was just multiply this whole equation by n plus 4 so that I could get it out of the denominator. Okay, now solving for n, I'm going to add 5n to both sides, which will give me 6n, and subtract 4 from both sides, which will give me negative 12. Then to solve for n, I just need to divide by 6, and I get n equals negative 2. All right, moving on to the next example, number 6. I see that I have two logs with the same base and subtraction between them, so I'm going to combine the logs using the quotient property. 
that will give me log base 9 of 4x divided by 2 equals 2. That right hand side just stays the same. I see that 4x divided by 2 I can simplify, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I get log base 9 of 2x equals 2. And now I'm going to rewrite this, right? The log is isolated, so I can move on to the next step. I'll rewrite this as an exponential equation, which gives me 9 squared equals 2x. 9 squared is just 81. And dividing by 2, I get x equals 40.5. Okay, these final two examples are very similar to those last two. So number seven, I'll start by subtracting the log to the other side. When I do that, I get zero left on the right-hand side. And I have subtraction going on between two logs with the same base, so I can use the quotient rule, or quotient property, excuse me, to combine these, as you see here. Okay, so rewriting this as an exponential equation, I have a base of 17, my exponent is 0, and the right-hand side is going to be what's inside the parentheses, so that's negative 3r minus 10 divided by negative 2r minus 2. 17 to the 0 power is just 1. So I have 1 is equal to this fraction, and I can multiply the whole thing by negative 2r minus 2. So that gives me negative 2r minus 2 times 1, which is just negative 2r minus 2, equal to negative 3r minus 10. Adding the 3r to the other side, I get r, and then adding 2 to, the, to both sides, I get r equals negative 8. Okay, number 8 now is very similar to problem number 6, so I'll start by combining these into one log using the quotient property. That gives me log base 9 of x minus 1 over 10 and equals 1. Rewriting this gives me 9 to the first power is equal to x minus 1 over 10. Okay, so just rewriting the log as an exponential equation. 9 to the first power is just 9, so I have 9 equals x minus 1 over 10. I multiply the entire equation by 10 to get rid of the fraction. That gives me 90 equals x minus 1. And adding 1 to both sides gives me my final answer of x equals 91. Okay, that is it for today's lesson. So go practice this on the homework, and we will see you tomorrow. Thank you.